Good afternoon. This um, second day of the month of March 2022. I'd like to do a quick one this time again. Um, and it will talk a bit about family. Um, the family setup. Um, the book that I listen to, that I believe in, that I follow, says something in the book of Colossians. It says that for God is the head of Christ, and Christ is the head of man, and man is the head of his home. Um, that's the order of God. Doesn't matter what you say. And is home. Home. Not his office. Not his, I mean, not where he serves in the public. His home. Just his home. God is the head of Christ. Christ is the head of man. Man is the head of his home. Now, the definition really, as a man, as we are taught, um, responsible men are taught in only one direction of how to be a man. And majorly, it is not what every other person you just, just lay a gloss over it and say provide, protect and uh, uh, what's the third one be productive we call it a name you know um, posterity just sustaining posterity meaning you recreate and then you know you multiply and all of that it goes beyond that it goes beyond that. It goes to the place where that man begins to remember or remind himself consistently that he is accountable to the man that created him, to the God that created him, and for the purpose that he was created, which is number one, be this, the head of his home. What does that even mean? Um, let's leave that the functions first and talk about that definition first that accountability part first which is that you give account for your family you render account to God for your family that is the part that gives problems between man and his wife usually. It is that part of giving, rendering account to God. That means, that means, I'm coming to the function. That means that Jesus said this. Jesus, Jesus Christ said this. He said, Father, those that you have given to me they are with me. They are with me. He it, 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 it said, I have lost none. I have lost none. Those that you have given to me, the head of the home, my wife, my daughters, my sons, they are with me. I have lost none. Jesus said that. He laid by an, an example again. In the story of the prodigal son, by making himself not consciously, but he was just not comfortable with losing one of his sons. He wasn't just comfortable with it. No, it was, it's not going to lead down and say, Well, you want to die? Die? You want to go? Go? No, he didn't do that. The one that was home, thank God, was home. But the one that was away, his father would not sleep until he was back. Because they needed to give account to God that the sons you gave me, they are with me. I have lost none. Nine 
nine was less than one for the flock to be a hundred. Ninety-nine were with Jesus. And he said, no, he left that ninety-nine. Don't do the word leave and forget. No, he doesn't leave without putting shelter. He would not leave without putting them in a place, a safe haven. The very, the most important thing for man to do is to create a haven for his family. Most important. Most important is to create a haven for his family. You must shelter your family. Anyhow you want to do it, shelter your family. So he keeps the 99 in one place and goes after one. Why? Because he must give the account that all those you've given to me, they are with me. I have lost none. That is the accountability part of man. It's tough. Life is very tough. If the man has made a wrong choice of his spouse, that will not help him to give that account to God. When men run away, sometimes when men change the spouse, sometimes, trust me, whatever you do in life, you as a man, you want to give that account that, look, Lord, look at the spouse you've given to me. She's with me. I've not lost her. What about the spouse who doesn't even believe that you give account to God on her behalf? By the way, just a digression here. If your relationship is fantastic, if your marriage is fantastic, or going through little troubles, going through little bumps, or you find it very easy to resolve issues and then because you have such a fantastic one you look at those who are going through the rocky ones and then you condemn and judge them and you know some people are so senseless for the first time i'll use that word are so senseless like you you have something going on well for you you cross the river so easily and then another man crosses that river and falls into it and you say it's not worthy come on come on you say it's not qualified if you've not been there don't say it most times people who condemn those who fall are those who have not even got into that river yet so you've not crossed it yet. You don't know how stormy it can be. You've not gone through the storms of your life and you have enough words to say against those who are going through some storms. The truth is, the storms that people face for their lives are different. They're based on your own destinies. So you can't use your, just, your, de your storm to judge another man's storm. Come on, you can't. It's just not... You're not running the same race. A digression. So I'm back on track, all right? So, what if you had a spouse? I'm speaking to men. And I'm speaking to women. So you can have understanding of what the mind of the man is. Or what the mind of man should be. The man's job is far beyond I provide, I protect, and then I produce. Your job is far beyond that. Your job goes to a place where you're very conscious of and giving accounts. Give me a second. Hello? Afternoon? I'm listening. I'm busy for now. Just give me a few minutes. I'll call you when I'm done. Sorry about that break. You know? So, is is more... The consciousness of man goes beyond all those ones that I go to the farm. Eh? 
I go to the farm and they plow, I whatever, and they reap and bring the food home for my family to eat. You know, it goes beyond that. He's conscious of the fact that he is going back home someday. He must give account to God. Lord, look at the family you gave me. In his home, don't let's not mix this. Thing. I'm still saying home. In his home, man is not man in the public and office place. Please, you are a worker in the working place, just as that woman is a worker in that office place. Don't go out telling anyone I have somebody like you at home, you should be sacked. For saying that. My belief about gender in the workplace is simple. Let me put it this way. In the home, man, woman, children. That's it. In the home, God, man, wife, children. In the home. Sorry, it is not God, man or woman. No. That's your own belief. That's not mine. I didn't read that. I read Bible. Bible says differently. Bible says this. God, Christ, man, home. Where is wife? In the home. In the home. Um, that's your own belief. Hold it. My belief is holding on to the word of God. I'd rather hold on to the word of God that hold on to whatever you think. In the workplace, in the workplace, boss, the next line of boss, the next line of boss, the ne 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 next line of boss, I don't even care about gender here. In my opinion, my daughters and my son are equally trained. Equally trained. None of them, they're focusing on whatever they want to do with their lives. And they are supported in that manner. None of them, I hear it happens in some places, but sorry, I'm from Elisha. My origin, I was born in Lagos. My origin is from Elisha in Ocean State. My father didn't teach us that. His father didn't teach him that. So we don't do train women different from how you train men. We know they do that. I, I don't know about itself. It's only going around Nigeria that I heard. I'm not sure I've seen that I heard that those things exist. Equal training. So if you've given equal training, I have given equal training to my children. And someone now tells my daughter in the workplace that there is a 70 to 30% disparity somewhere. I'll remind you that I didn't train them in 70 to 30 percent disparity. I will remind you that's what fathers should do. In fact, fathers should stand up these days for their daughters if they face such challenge in the workplace. The job should go to the fathers. It should go to the fathers. It is gender equity that I stand with. If you're qualified for the office, for the job, for the position, Go for it. I don't care if you are a man or woman. If you are qualified for it, go for it. In my opinion, there are some jobs that men are better at. Women are better at some other jobs. Life might be better if you recognize such things. Life might be better and easier if you recognize such things. If you recognize such things. For example, there's war going on in Russia and Ukraine. There's no better time to explain the real role that the man and the woman plays. No better time. The role of complementing each other, not competing against each other. Complementing, not competing. Complementing, not competing against each other. Man carries the gun, go to war. That's why you have chest, go to war. Woman carry the children to safety. If the man comes back home, we'll thank God. If he doesn't come back home, woman builds the next generation. Tell me how beautiful that is.
or tell me if it does, it's not beautiful enough. If the man is back, we thank God for it. If he's not back, the woman builds the next generation of leaders. I don't think anything is better than that, in my view. No better time to explain how we complement each other. I'm coming back to how the man renders account. <clears throat> Any wife that recognizes that first part of the account that the man has to render to God will focus on helping her husband to give a good account. There was a contest once when someone said, oh, everybody will give account to God for himself. Okay. I'm not too sure I understand that part, but some people believe it. The man will give account for himself. The woman will give account for himself. Okay. Me, I don't know about it. I don't know about it. Because I think that when you face God, from everything I've read in the Bible, when you face God, the man will do a walk up to God and say, Lord, look at my family, my wife, my children, and all of that. I'll come back to if the children are married. I'll come back to that. This is the, it's, God is not confusing. God is not confusing. So he comes to and says, Lord, look at my family. Say, so, oh yeah, your wife. The question to the wife will be how she supports her husband. Now, exposing that will include what she's done with her life. I.e., she's been the bank manager, she's been the senator, she's been the president of this nation and that nation and that nation and all of that in support of her husband. That's a beautiful account. She is head of a, she is president of a nation. Remember I cut the line, home and public. They are not the same. Gender in the home, gender in the public, they are not the same. May we have many, 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 many more women in public offices, even presidents itself. My prayer, my own prayer, that's my own prayer. Um, so I'm coming back. So you find quite a number of Nigerians these days, we, you know, mothers that we have these days, they are chairman of banks chairman of banks, chairman of top places, highest places, but they are somebody's wife. In fact, let me remind you, the toughest woman in the world, I think she still may be the toughest, will be Margaret Thatcher. Margaret Thatcher was the Prime Minister of, Eng of um, United Kingdom. United Kingdom or England? Or Britain? They're making us understand they are all different. Okay for some many many years ago not many many years many some years ago but until she resigned and died and whatever she was mrs thatcher somebody's wife and two sons for the man it was clear who her husband was there was never a time never a time that there was a problem about how strong thatcher was in the public and how she ever had a problem with being somebody's wife. There was never such a record. Never such a record. She, re she resigned to her husband's house every day. This was England, though. It was England. So, in a record, as far as God is concerned, she was Prime Minister. But do you think God do ask her if she was Prime Minister first, or ask her how she was Mrs. Thatcher first. Think about it. Okay, so I'll come back to understanding that accountability, which is the most important thing in the mind of a sane man, S-A-N-E man, is how to render account to God for his family. Okay, let's, let's assume his son is married, his daughter is married, is, um, what I believe will come to God and point to them and leave them to give account 
the daughter will give account for how she was somebody's wife. Yes. The son will give account for being the head of his home. That is where people render account one for another. If you can understand this more than provide, protect, produce, if you can understand that rendering of account, we'll have better homes. Because I think that a good woman will make sure that a husband gives a good account to God. This generation, and I think this generation, not the new one, the one that is reigning right now, I belong in that generation, the one that's reigning right now, the 30s, no, not 30s, the 40s and the 50 year olds approaching their 60s. There's been a lot of fight about we are equal, we are co ed. And that's where, that's destroying the generation that is following. Either destroying or repairing, because you see, many of the generation of the 30s and 20s are looking at you and saying, I'd rather go east or I'd rather go west. I'm not going central with you. You know, um, I hope you understand that analogy. So, well, I said all of this to see if we can save one more home. I think that divorce is just too rampant out there. And then, please, you don't solve. If you don't want to solve problem, don't solve it. But lie, lie. When you lie, you don't solve any problem. When you're sentimental, you don't solve any problems. Critical thinking solves problems, not sentiments. Um, let's say with one more home. Help the head of your home to give a good account to God. Even if you don't believe he will give a good account, the fact is he will still give account. Jesus has laid <laughs> the principle <laughs> it won't change. Lord, those you have given to me, they are with me. I have lost none. That's accountability, madam. That's accountability. Mr. Man, that is accountability. You will render account to God for what God has given to you. Those that you have given to me. He didn't say the house you have given to me. He didn't say the car you have given to me. He didn't say the road, the name you have given to me. He said those you have given to me, they are with me. God bless. Have a very lovely day. This is HBO again.